Blessings to you as you're joining on. Share this broadcast. Invite your followers. This is going to be mighty on here. Proverbs chapter 21. Uh, Proverbs chapter 21 verse 25 says, The desire of the slothful killeth him. For his hands refuse to labor. The desire of the slothful killeth him. For his hands refuse to labor. Let me say this, children of God. Work is a divine path of God. Is a divine path of God. And work, it puts you in position so that you can honor God better. Because uh, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 say you honor the Lord with your substance. And so uh, that's the way that you honor God correctly with your substance. And so it's very important that you have substance so that you can honor God. If I don't have any substance, if I don't have any money, I can't honor God. And so... Contrary to what you may have known, honoring God is not church attendance. Honoring God is not uh, reading the Bible. Honoring, honoring God is when I take what I possess and I sow it into God's work, God's messenger, God's mission. So look what it says right here. The desire of the slothful killeth him. So a slowful person, here's what I want you to see. A slowful person is someone that is a slave to the devil. Like the devil has various avenues to rule them, keep them broke, keep them financially embarrassed, or keep them financially limited. Like they never can do what God say because they don't have enough funds. And money is the dominating factor on whether or not they can obey God or do what God say in their minds. A slowful person also I want you to see is a person that is insecure. They're out of security and they are procrastinators. Another definition that you want to see about a slowful person is that they procrastinate. They make plans, but they never put it to work. And that's why you never become wealthy. You can never become wealthy, you can never become rich God's way if you are someone that is slothful. When you hear the Father give you an instruction, you have to move. Because the Bible said, poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction, which shows you that instructions is the channel in which God is going to flow wealth to me. So if I refuse the instructions, that means that I will damage my financial anointing from God. Now, there is a money anointing that King Jesus possesses that a lot of people will never wear. It's not because he don't want them to wear it, but for them to wear it, it is a requirement. OK, it, it is a it is a disciplinary thing that God is going to pitch you through where he's going to train you how to sow, how to listen to him with your money. And a lot of times people don't want that. Uh, there are some people that, that they really don't want God to talk to them about money. But at the same token, those are the people that rob God of his enjoyment of being the Lord over your money. Because the Lord want to be Lord over your money before he make you a Lord over money. If you let the Lord be Lord over your money, he'll make you a Lord over money. Like he'll transfer and let you reap what you sold. You sold control of your money over to him. Now he's sowing control of his money over to you. And how many of you all know that the Lord's money is bigger than the money that you're making at your job? Look at your annual income. Your annual income, uh-huh. What your annual income might be a hundred thousand fifty? No, when I let me not say a hundred thousand, you know, whatever it is, forty thousand, fifty thousand. Think about that. You're dealing with a four year, forty trillion plus four year, forty uh, trillion dollars is a joke to God. 
Imagine you settle for that annual income as if that's your totality. When God got so much things he wants you to do. Imagine what instructions God cannot give you because the money is not there. You say, no, prophet, God can still give me the instructions without the money. Yeah, he can. But will it be done with excellence? Hold a meeting. Okay, Lord. Well, I don't got no money, but I trust you. Okay, hold the meeting. It might be a cockroach in the back. <laughs> You're there filming on Facebook. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. And, and praise God, the cockroach was hiding in the cut. You don't got the camera filming, the power just moving, the cockroach just, just disrespecting the whole scenery, the whole. But see, when you have plenty of money, you can do things with excellence and you can do things to represent your God correctly. Saints, imagine all the times when the father um, wants to pitch you before people. And he wants you to represent him as El Shaddai. Um, it was funny to me that God never said that he was a God of Lazarus. <laughs> Even though Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham, he said he the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Now, all these people were rich. All these people was rich. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of them are rich. So imagine God is saying, I'm the God of them. How come God is boasting that he's God over these rich men? Praise God. Imagine this. The Lord has a financial ability that he wants you to tap into. And it's called sowing. It's called working. It's called reaping. The Lord has a financial strategy to make you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, the lender and not the borrower, and it's called working, sowing, and reaping. Proverbs 21 verse 5 says this, The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. I'm in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 5. It says the thoughts. That's dealing with the mind, children. It's not even dealing with the decision making. It said the thoughts of the diligent. That means what they're thinking. Their thoughts. It says it produces plenteousness. Do you know what that means? Plenty of money. Plenty of provision. Plenty of substance. Plenty of materialistic possessions. It says the thoughts of the diligent. But look what it says. It says the diligent. You know, the diligent is the one that is unmoved, immovable, rather. The diligent is a person that does not get distracted by storms or is not intimidated by Goliath or is not fearful to step out on the water and walk on the water with King Jesus. The diligent is a person that is established in their promise, the word of God. They are not shaken. They are not double-minded. You can't be diligent and double-minded. A double-minded and indecisive person will stay poor. If you look at your financial state, if you feel like you could have been ahead way long ago, if you look back at your past, it was because you was indecisive and double-minded. Indecisiveness and double-mindedness is the reasons why a child of God stays in poverty or stays underneath debts or financial issues. All your financial issues can be destroyed if you break that demon of double-mindedness and indecisive decision-making. Because when you're indecisive, that means that you know that the Father revealed something to you, but you won't step out on it. Saints, let me give you a secret about sowing. If I hold the seed too long, it's going to hold me back from my future. Wow. 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 If I hold the seed too long, it's going to hold back 
the financial outpouring of the spirit of God on my life. If I hold money too long, God has the right to withhold his blessing from me. When I hold money, I take on the spirit of mammon. And the spirit of mammon is where I am underneath the fear of money. That's what the spirit of mammon is all about. I become money slave. Money rules me. I'll betray anybody. I'll destroy anybody. I'll lie. I'll be unintegral just to get money. That's what the spirit of mammon does. See, what the father created a system called sowing to train your mind not to put your trust in money. Because every time God give me an instruction about money, I'm dying to myself about money. And I'm breaking off money's potential to rule me. You see what I'm saying? Because, because saints, let me just tell you this. Even when you become a millionaire, you're going to have millionaire instructions from God about money. So God might tell you, I want you to sow 500,000 here or sow 100,000 here or sow 200,000 here or sow 350,000 here. You see what I'm saying? So imagine if you're not sowing, you're going to start trusting that million dollars, 2 million, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, 38 million, you're going to start trusting that as if it is your, your, uh, your oxygen. Money is not your oxygen. Money is your footstool. Don't make it an oxygen tank when it's a ground. You walk on money so that money never walk on you. There's two finances that can flow in your life. The finances from slavery and the finances from Calvary. There's two type of finances that can flow in your life. The finances from slavery, the finances from Calvary. The finances from Calvary, it will only work in the life of blood-bought sowers. When you're a blood-bought sower, you receive the income from Calvary. And what does 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 say? You know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he became poor, that through his poverty, you might be made rich. Where was his, his through his poverty? At the cross. He was not in poverty on the earth. Because the Bible said that he went, go tell the disciples, go get this uh, nice venue so that we can hold the Last Supper in there. The Lord Jesus funded the Last Supper, had a whole buffet of food. You don't do that when you when you when you in poverty. So I said through his poverty. You was made rich. So on the cross, Jesus became all your financial demons. At the cross, King Jesus became all your financial demons. So now you can receive financial angels moving and ministering for you. My God. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus became all your financial infirmities, all financial wicked spirits. Ha! Huh? He became all the financial and poverty demons. Every, so every spirit of lack, Jesus became it so that you can move in the spirit of wealth, the spirit of riches. You say, no, there's no thing as a spirit of riches. Go to Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. It said that King Jesus received riches. That's, that's a part of the spirits of God. The spirit of riches is what happens when the blessing is on you. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, Proverbs 10, 22. That's the spirit of riches flowing. That's the Holy Spirit Dealing with making you rich. Proverbs chapter 8, the wisdom angel, she said that I will cause those that love me to inherit substance. Proverbs chapter 8, it says that she'll cause those that love her to inherit substance. You see that? So, so the wisdom angel in covenant to make you rich. That say that in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 21. 
uh, I, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures, treasure, treasures. So the spirit of riches will sit on a sower, but you, you're going to have to step into this. If you never step into this, you're not going to see this manifest. And you're going to live an average life. For what? After Jesus done died on the cross, after the Holy Spirit has come to the earth, and you got the fullness of God moving inside of your life, why sit here and die when there's a vast supply? The Lord Jesus became all your financial demons at the cross. So nothing can stop you from having the money God wants you to have. Now, children, let me say this here. You have to learn to pursue God for instructions. And that's one thing that a lot of children of God don't do. You make decisions, then you pray for God to bless it. Pray for instructions so that you can make a decision. Don't make decisions and ask God to bless your decision. Ask God for instructions. And when you obey the instructions, they got blessings tied to that instruction. Father, I pray. You say, how do I pray? Father, in Jesus name, I pray for wisdom. I ask you to give me sound wisdom. I receive sound wisdom from you and understanding. And I take instructions from your mouth. You can't do that and not become a multi-billionaire. You hear what I said? If you just say what I just said, it's impossible for you not to become a multi-billionaire. If you stick with that law in your mouth of what I just spoke, it's impossible for you not to become a multi-billionaire. Because everything the Father going to speak to you is going to release you into abundance. Understanding the laws of divine abundance. Divine abundance is always around you. The Lord gave you two options for life. He gave you the option to be underneath the thief and he gave you the option to live in abundance. John 10, 10, which equals 20, 10 plus 10 is 20. We going into, we, we in 2020, basically I'm already there. And we're dealing with also the number of the prophet 20, uh, uh, Second Chronicles 2020, 20, believe the prophet, so shall you prosper. God telling you that there's going to be someone that's going to instruct you and their instructions is going to make you prosperous. It's going to make you successful. It's going to make you have what God wants you to have without any devil creating failure for you to get it. I am abundance. I am the riches of God. I am the blessing of the Lord. I am the blessing of Abraham. I am a, a, a child of Abraham and my father Abraham was rich. And so I take on the same lineage, the same transference that my father gives to me. Do you understand when you have a child that that child comes from the father? The father pits sperm and that sperm has that child. You ever see two women give birth? You ain't never going to see it. <laughs> Once that man pits that seed in that woman, that is the child. Now guess what? Abraham is your father. You his child. So imagine his DNA is in you and his DNA is riches and wealth. And, and very rich. So the very rich anointing is sitting on you through the DNA of Abraham. Now, Abraham was a crazy sower. He was such a sower that he was ready to sow Isaac, his own child. See, you can't walk in the blessing of Abraham and not be a crazy sower. Because the blessing of Abraham going to make you radical about giving. And, and watch this. You can't have the blessing of Abraham and not give to your Melchizedek. Abraham had Melchizedek and he sold a tenth of everything he had into Melchizedek. So, so the blessing of Abraham will give your mind wisdom to discern who is my soul. God don't give me souls. He give me a soul. So that I can know that when I'm sowing into that soul where the blessing is coming from. 
My soul is my covenant of wealth. When Abraham gave a tenth of what he had into Melchizedek, he was tapping in the laws of abundance. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Let's go ahead to Proverbs 28, verse 20. The faithful man shall abound with blessings. Uh, Proverbs 28, verse 20 says, the faithful man shall abound with blessings. The faithful man shall abound with blessing. That's the man that's full of faith. And when I'm full of faith, I sow. When I'm full of faith, I honor God. When I'm full of faith, I become a giver. I tap into abundance. Ma carapa cote peredes. It's easy for you to be wealthy. It's easy for you to be rich. You just got to attend to the voice of God. And hearing from God is the easiest thing you're going to do. The Lord is not complicated at all. He's a repeated thought that won't go away. The voice of God is a repeated thought that won't go away. He'll talk to you in your mind. God talked to you telepathically. He talked to you in your brain. So you have thoughts that come from God. God will let you look at your financial situation and say, I need some money. That's God talking to you. Because God telling you, now I'm going to lead you to the job. I'm going to lead you to the place where you're going to invest yourself and it's going to reap money. And then I'm going to show you what to do with that money. I'm going to show you how to honor me and how to spend that money so that I can multiply that money. Because God can't multiply money that's spent. God can only multiply money that's sown. Because when you saw it, that means that you're saying, Lord, your work is better, is greater, is more important than my family and everything. You don't believe it? Look at the Bible said that the, the, the woman at Zarephath, the prophet said, give me your last meal. Why didn't the prophet say, hey, you got a little child right there. Just make sure you feed your child. No, the prophet saying, you got to learn how to pick God first, woman. Because if you're going to be rich, you're going to have to learn to pick God first. The Lord told me that Peter was the biggest sower amongst men in the discipleship. That's why he told me, he said, son, that's why I used Peter to go confront Ananias and Sapphira and ask them why they're not sowing. Where the money at? He had that qualification from God because he was the biggest sower. See, you have authority to do that as an apostle. To check people about money when you're a sower. See, a lot of people don't understand when we preach on the seed and stuff like that. Oh, 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 oh why, why are you talking about money? No, 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 that's a part of the department of God. Acts chapter, um, uh, in the book of Acts, we see now Peter is checking them because he's the biggest sower. So God trusts him. It would have been hypocritical for Peter to go talk to them about sowing if he wasn't sowing. Think about that. You can't go judge somebody and tell them why you're not sowing with the money at if you yourself is hiding money from God. So think about that. Peter was the biggest sower. So 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 there's a there's a Peter power for sowing. My God. Jesus. There's a Peter power for sowing. And, and saints, the blessing about sowing is it makes you rich soul. The more I sow into my God connection, my Jesus connection, the man of God feeding me the word that's giving me higher wisdom, that's giving me instruction, my prophet of God, my priest, my king. A lot, a lot of people in the body of Christ don't even know that the Bible say that we are kings. The more I do that, the more wealth comes. My daughter, Jamila, she been sowing into me. My daughter right here, Jamila, she been sowing into me. Faithfully. She had miracle money come to her. Not only miracle money has come to her, but she just got blessed with a brand new car. The, and she ain't paid for it. The father, he works miracles of abundance in the life of people that honor him with their finances. That's how he operates. And my daughter, Jamila, she always listening to me. If I come on at 2 a.m., she listening to me. Now, now she not the only one. I got various, I got innumerable amounts of people in my ministry that the same, the same thing happening to them. This is a real anointing. The law of abundance will hit your life and it'll saturate you. 